I want to get into some Caitlin Clark stuff in a second, but I saw this from Brian Winhorst. NBA scouts don't think Bronny James was able to put his best foot forward this year because USC didn't play him in his position. They say he should play somewhere where he can be the point guard. Like, what are we doing? They say he should play somewhere where he can be the point guard and build up his skills. So, all of these stories are the same. Okay? And we can do this more in the podcast, but again, a buyer, you're a really good guy. If, if I'm not making sense, if it doesn't all equal out at the end, please feel free. You can call me. I don't, I'm not, because things that work out in my brain sometimes don't come out of my mouth. I don't know if anybody else is like that. But uh, if you go back like a year and a half ago, there was a lot of discussion about the NFL and Eric Bieniemy not being hired. And there was this, well, the NFL owners are inherently racist because otherwise, why wouldn't you hire Eric Bieniemy? Right? You even had people that would say, you know, owners want to hire somebody they can take around to their buddies. Like that's somebody who says that has no idea how the NFL works. Like there's no boosters. There's no donors. There's no handshaking. It's I give you a job. Do I want to be able to be around you? Like, sure, but that's not really what's important. Can you get along with the front office? Can you get along with your coaches? Can you guys win football games? That's all that matters. And I've talked to plenty of GMs and presidents, and their whole thing is like, will adding said coach, will adding, will any of this help us win games more? And so the, the job of a GM or a president or an owner when they're trying to find the right coach is, what is going to help us win the most football games, the longest, the, the, the most, with the most, uh, the quickest and for the longest period of time. We want to sustain excellence, right? It's pretty simple. The more games you win, the more everybody is happy. Why? Because, you know, players get bonuses. Okay. Players get bonuses. Uh, general managers and coaches get extensions. And when they get extensions, they get to stay living where they live or maybe buy a better house and they don't have to move because families hate that. People hate moving, hate leaving their job. And assistant coaches, in addition to making more money and being able to stay, they also get opportunities to go get other jobs. It's the same thing as front office. So the only thing that's important in professional sports is winning. And so what, what we have a group of people, we have a group of people who are in the media, and many of them are on social media as well that aren't in the media, but we have a group of people within media who believe that there's such nefarious intentions from people in power that despite the fact that the number one and really only objective is to win football games, that they go like, yeah, we could win with Eric Bieniemy, but you know he's black, so let's find a white guy who can do almost as good. It doesn't make any sense, right? If your job is to win... Then you get whoever the best, man, woman, uh, non-binary. I don't really care. You just win football games. Make sense? Sure. Okay. So then we have this, um, there's this argument that has popped up. And it really was, I think, Jamel Hill probably triggered it the most because she has the biggest social media following, where she put out a picture of three uh, WNBA players uh, or somebody else put a picture that uh, somebody else put a picture, but then she retweeted or whatever. She, that quote, had, she quote tweeted a sporting news tweet that had the three players that have signature uh, shoe deals with, uh, with the shoe companies. Right. And those three are Brianna Stewart, Sabrina Ionescu, and now uh, Caitlin Clark, who signed a reportedly eight, eight figure deal uh, to be with Nike. Which, of course, caused uh, Jamel Hill to, to do the, which I, I find super disingenuous. What do they all have in common? Obviously, all three are white. So what, what Jamel Hill would lead you to believe is, for example, Nike. And Nike, who has, they gave Colin Kaepernick a bunch of money. I'm not really sure. And they had that cool commercial, but I'm not really sure there was, was there any product, Colin Kaepernick, that he sold? Like, and they have been at the forefront for women's sports for a long time. These aren't the first shoes they've ever put out in a woman's name. And by the way, Sabrina Ionescu's shoes are the number one seller. Now, some of that is a little bit disingenuous because they use it as their team shoe, 
which means college teams get them automatically. Like those are the shoes that everybody gets. And then high school teams, when they order shoes from Nike, those are the ones they get. It's a great shoe. And really it's the Kyrie Irving shoe that when Kyrie, when they had to get rid of Kyrie, these were the next shoes down the pipe and they just slapped Sabrina's logo on it. And Sabrina, who is a great college player and is a good professional player. I don't know if she's great. Like I, I legit have no idea. Don't actually care to know, but um, I, obviously she did the three point shooting shootout with Steph. She has a relationship there, but the fact she went to Oregon and I'm sure Steph was wanted to put her in his shoe at Under Armour, help get her own shoe and they've killed it. But, but the, the, the wondering aloud, which is again, disingenuous. Like if you think people are racist, then go ahead and say it. Cause then you'll be made to look the, as foolish as you really look. But that Nike would, Nike could make a bunch of money on, Dan Byer, how do you say her name? Is it a, a Jai Wilson? How do you how do you I, I don't it's know. It's Asia Wilson. Asia Wilson, I'm saying. Yeah. Asia, Asia, Asia Sabrina Wilson. Ionescu. You don't even have Sabri- to say the I on it. Sabrina Ionescu. Ionescu. Appreciate it. Asia Wilson, who's apparently a two-time league MVP. I know she's the best player on Vegas, right? And they won the championship. Um, and, you know, people are like, well, why doesn't she have her own shoe? So, again, you're sitting on your phone or on your computer or in front of a microphone and you're actually saying that Nike, as a, as a publicly traded Fortune 500 company that has been well ahead of everything in terms of, uh, of, uh, of all of the different social justice or injustice issues uh, and fem- women in sports, they would sacrifice all that equity. Because in their heart of hearts, they're racist. They don't want black women to sell their sneakers. That's, that's the presumption that's made. Right? Again, this is a company that they get rid of anything that doesn't have, I believe, 12% growth year to year or more. So you're saying that Nike, like, yeah, listen, we could sell a lot of shoes, but let's not do it because she's black. Asia Wilson's black. We don't want to do that. That's what her tweet said. Without saying it, which is, I think, even weaker. And here's the, th- now Now you have Bronny James. And, well, um, they didn't use him the right way. They didn't develop him as a point guard. Well, they had, first of all, they had, um, um, they had Isaiah Collier, who was the number one rated prospect in the country, who is a point guard. And, oh, yeah, by the way, so what, what you're saying is Andy Enfield, Andy Enfield, rather than trying to win games, he wanted to what keep Bronny down because he didn't see him as a starting point guard. And so that's why he didn't play point. Like, that's what we're actually saying. Like, how does this make sense to anybody? Anybody? Are, do those things parallel each other? Do, do, do I make any sense to you, by or, or am I too far all over the place? I, just, I think Bronny's situation is just so unique considering who he is, what his last name is, heck, what his first name is, and even just considering his health situation in tying into the story that you're just talking about um, for for what the career was at USC or what we expected it to be at USC, I think that also played a big part of it. So I just think that Bronny's situation is just very, very unique. Um, it is. It is. And I, I think all these situations, in fact, are unique. But I think the one parallel is like, we do know that, um, that yeah, people play who they think is going to help them win the most, right? You play somebody who's going to help you win. That, that's coaching 101. Like, why would Andy Enfield not play him at point guard if he thought he was the best point guard or gave them the best chance to win? And by the way, Bronny did start at point guard several games when Isaiah Collier was out. They didn't win a lot of those games. So I just, it doesn't mean that coaches are always right. It doesn't mean that businesses are always right. It doesn't mean, um, uh, it doesn't mean that, that coaching decisions and who we pick are always right. It's just, where did this decision come from? And generally, I think in business, you make the decision that where you're going to be able to make the most money. And when you're a coach, your only goal is to win the most games. Who gives me the best opportunity to win? JC, what do you think? I think we should play that. Um, what Don Staley said about Caitlin oh, Clark's impact this, on the game. This, this, this is good. 
Um, I like people who get it. I like people who get it. And there's lots of people in our business that don't get it. You know, I saw a cut and I sent it to you, I believe, uh, Jay Stu. I don't know if I sent it to everybody. I saw a clip yesterday. Pablo Torre was on with, um, who was he on with when, uh, he was on, what's the name? Levitard show, right? Yeah. So, so take a listen to Pablo Torre talking with Levitard about the WNBA. Just marvel and just marvel truly at like when you say WNBA, the first thing you think of is, wow, that ratings monster. Like we have not seen this, Dad. Like I had Morgan Murphy on my show on Friday to talk about what it's like actually when you've been rooting and watching and consuming and trying to evangelize people on your favorite sport. She's one of the she's the biggest women's basketball fan I know in my life. And she's been trying to convince people for 20 years. This is worth it. And it's finally happening. And there's comedy, right? And not merely you being proven right, but also the dynamic of what happens when everybody starts like gentrifying the thing you love. And so I was a bit of this with Lucy and Iowa, but the way it's happening at scale here with Caitlin Clark and women's basketball is funny because you have to handle this unprecedented problem. A deeply unpopular thing seemingly overnight is now popular. And now you are both vindicated and infuriated that everybody has takes delivered with the confidence of people who've been there for as long as you have. And that is both a sign that you've made it and is also your personal hell. Like a genie cursed you with a wish that they granted with the footnote of, and by the way, now Stephen A is going to have takes about Caitlin Clark that are going to make you infuriated. Like that's, it's an amazing thing we've just never seen before in American sports. Well, okay, I would I would correct him on on several levels. Probably the biggest one, though, is I don't believe that there's any metrics that says the sport is suddenly now popular, or that it was. I, I like that he admits it was unpopular. I, I I probably actually think that's true. I I don't like the term unpopular, whereas it just kind of existed and we didn't care about it. But it was on 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 some levels unpopular. I mean, I I think that's. But I think it was unpopular on some, you know, I think it was unpopular for, for reasons not having to deal, not, not having to do with, um, with the actual play. It's the, the constant need for affirmation that you're somehow good. But that's honestly how WNBA people think. It's like this thing has been awesome all along, and now all of a sudden people are saying we're awesome. We're and you're supposed to say we're sorry. Here's the truth to it. Here's what Don Staley, who is now the head coach of the back-to-back defending national champion South Carolina Gamecocks, said about the Caitlin Clark effect. I want basketball, women's basketball to grow. And I'm not too shy about saying why it grows. She's made it grow over the past two years. We need to make sure that we're telling the stories of, of our entire game. So sometimes you have to go against the masses to really cut down and say what's happening, you know, in in real time. Kaylin Clark is the sole reason why viewership has shot through the roof for our game. Yes. Why is that so hard to admit? Now, can you, as Don proposed, can you tell other stories? Like, once you now have a bigger audience? Of course. Of course you can. I don't know if people will stay tuned. My guess is that they won't. My guess is that this is a bit of a passing phase. And now as she moves on to to the pro ranks, it kind of gets lost up. It's a summer sport. It's cut up by the Olympics. There's no built-in rivalries. You don't have the brand names of the team. Like people can't name the names of the teams. That's actually a big thing. Uh, But we're all going to see it kind of play out in real time. But at least she's admitting that there's not any other reasons. There's only one reason people are paying attention. It's Caitlin Clark. And instead, you'll get people like Jamel Hill who are like, well, you know, they're only paying it. Basically, they're only paying attention to her because she's white. And that sucks. Do I think the color of her skin plays a factor? Sure. Sure, it's part of the story. I've told you I think her sexual orientation plays plays a part of the story. Because the, the league was seen as a league for Lesbians. Okay. 
just and 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 you could say like there'll be people listening like oh my god like where everybody's sitting there nodding their head like yeah okay again it it's not a thing to me i don't care but it's a definitely a different environment different subculture it's just different and some people aren't comfortable with that whereas they're super comfortable with caitlin clark she's got straight brown hair looks like she has this, her hair is just like my daughter's hair but I, I will tell you, the the WNBA fan out there is um, more obnoxious than Eagle fans. Because right? Eagle fans know we don't like them, but they don't care. And the Eagles have at least won two Super Bowls here in the last six, seven years. Whereas WNBA fans are acting like we're all idiots for not celebrating the sport that nobody really paid attention to, nobody really cared about for a long time, and we're supposed to apologize for it. Like, we don't like you, and you care. It's Doug Gottlieb Show here on Fox Sports Radio. I, I honestly would tell you, I never would have thought in my life we would still be talking about women's basketball at this point in time. But we are. That is the power. That is the power of of Caitlin Clark. I love it. Um let me Sam, you you're obviously a big Iowa guy. That's why you're trying to get tickets. You're gonna go watch. Can you can you name how many WNBA team names can you name? Uh well there's only twelve. Um uh, probably could name eight. Go. Las Vegas Aces. Okay. LA Champions. Sparks. Yep. Uh, let's go Seattle Storm. Nice. Okay, let's go um, Chicago Sky. Yeah. Let's go um, Connecticut Sun. Ooh. Let's go New York Liberty. Yes, that's six. Let's go Indiana Fever. Yep. Uh, let's see. That's it. I no, think that's about it. Hold on now. Hold on now. I think that's about it. Hold up now. Hold up. Uh, whew, I'm missing something. I'm missing some. I'm missing. I mean, I have seven. And I got five more. How about this? We listen to it. Or we think about it over the break, and got to go. <laughs> I got close. You did pretty well. I'm trying to.